In this video, I want to talk about low pre-discovery. Specifically, I want to talk about ED loader and sort of share some of my thoughts on um, some of the important options in ED loader. Now, I've used low pre-discovery in my past three jobs. And at this point, I am stopping using low pre-discovery because we have switched to relativity processing. So this video is kind of my brain dump of what I think is important in ED loader. Uh, this way I will share this with you before I forget. And maybe this will be a video for me that in two years that I have to do some more processing, I'll go back and watch my own video and remind myself how things work. So let's get started. I'm going to jump right into ED loader. And first thing I want to briefly speak about is doc ID or doc ID seed is what they call it. Um, Law likes to by default, just put a sequential number 0000001 and number from there. And then when you start a new session, it tries to pick up from the last number used. And generally it seems fine, but if you are using multiple station, that system never works. So what you want to do is assign some kind of prefix. And when you split data up to multiple stations, you want to use a different prefix per station. And anytime you start a new session, it's a good idea to start with one again and keep track of your prefixes based on jobs or sets of data that you received. This way you know where data is coming from based on the prefix. And if you ever need to restart something, you know which set of doc IDs uh, you're dealing with. So I'm sure you knew already. Let's jump into settings and talk about that. All right, archive extraction. Uh, you should always have archive extraction on if there are any zip files or anything like that. You definitely want them extracted. Um, I prefer to have a nested file name for items that are extracted so, so that you know which archive they came from. Uh, some people like to include uh, attachments as well as, as a separate record in um, law. I don't like doing that because then when you go to produce, you have that file and you may not be producing all family members. I know it's a thing some people don't produce all family members, but um, specifically because of that and also with doubling up storage space or more than doubling. Um, so I do like to enable archive extraction, but I generally don't put zip file into the law case itself. Uh, now compound document extraction, this is a very widely debated topic. Um, I either enable compound document extraction or I restrict it to PDF portfolio. Uh, again, this is something you should speak to your team and make a decision on that. I, I will make a separate video talking about this more in depth, so stay tuned for that. Uh, deduplication, uh, pretty simple. You know, you just turn it on or off if you need to, and then you select should you do it on a global or case level. Um, there's really nothing magical here. Um, as far as include or exclude records, I never use partially exclude. What that'll do is it will uh, create an entry in your law case, but don't save a native file. I think that's a terrible option because if you ever need to rerun the duplication for some reason, now you have a bunch of files with no natives. So that is an option to avoid. So you either exclude if you know you're going to have a lot of duplicates, like you're restoring tape backups or something. So just let it drop them out at the import or you include full documents and um, if you need to run the duplication, you know, native files are there and you find. And if you're using one of the more advanced storage systems like BlueArk or something, uh, those file systems do deduplication on the file level. So they will actually remove those duplicates that you're loading. So you're not getting uh, as much hit on storage. Jumping into email section. We have some sorting, which uh, doesn't really matter. The sorting is by folder within PST. So sorting by send on ascending is, is good, but because you're going to load this into a database, you could sort documents however you want. Uh, the important option here is save Outlook message as, and my preference is MHTML. This way all the pictures get embedded into the HTML file itself and not being linked like in the HTML format. If you go with HTML, it's just going to make a mess and your accounts are not going to line up. Terrible option to go with. Go with HTML MHT or MHT. And if you 
workflow requires MSG files, you can certainly go with that, but know that it's a live email and uh, your storage size is going to be bigger because attachments are embedded in and you will not be able to produce partial families if you are producing your email as MSG because attachments are embedded. So again, my preference is MHT. Uh, when we go to exclusions tab, we want to exclude our mail store. This is the same idea as including a, uh, as excluding a zip file and just loading content of a zip file. Same thing we're doing here. We including a content of a PST, but we don't want the PST itself in our case. Um, we leaving everything else alone. We are going to put all the zero byte files because I believe you should account for absolutely every file there is. And when we're talking about date range exclusion, I prefer to load everything and then do filtering from within low case. Moving on to file types. Now this has a complex database which talks about how to handle different file types. Oh, play with this for a little bit, um, actually maybe a lot, and I did not have any good results with this. It's very confusing and I found the best way to do it. Just get everything loaded. Load all your files, then do your filtering. Don't mess with this. In the general tab, there is not much uh, options here besides time zone. You turn on whatever time zone you need and uh, that's how it's going to be adjusted for the documents you're loading. You can enable distributed processing. Uh, this is more of um, an afterthought feature that wasn't thought out really well. It works okay f when you have a lot of loose e-docs, but when you have a lot of PST files, I found this to be very problematic. You don't know which stations load which PSTs. It's really hard to resume from a crash. Um, not, not really great. However, if you have like you know, millions of loose e-docs, uh, distributed processing worked really well for me. Uh, you get less control over doc ID when you do that, but still, it uh, in that situation, it worked really well for me. In the metadata tab, we have a bunch of additional metadata we can extract. I generally like to keep this off because most of this metadata is not getting used uh, during review. Uh, maybe like hidden slides, hidden sheets is used, but what you can do is run document analysis later after you run the, after you load these documents and you can still get this metadata back. So if client doesn't say they need it, I just leave it off and load it as is. In our NIST options, this is where we can specify to exclude system files. So we'll basically download a NIST database and Low will check data against that database and we'll exclude them. This is only useful if you have um, like a forensic image of a of a laptop or a computer and you know there's like a Windows uh, folder in there and then you just loading everything in and you want to drop out as much of system files as possible. It's not going to get all of them but it's going to it's going to exclude lots of them. Uh, for the output I keep everything the same and password this is a new feature so finally LexisNexis came around and now we can add passwords to your set before you process so it'll try to use those passwords to open files. I haven't used this much uh, because it's new but uh, I'm really looking forward to having that. In the post import actions I don't want law to do anything. Get it loaded then I'll do something that I need to do next. Um, I generally want to let load and finish, perform my quality control, make sure everything is good and only then I will kick off next step. I don't want it to automatically start indexing. It seems like a good idea. Oh yeah, I just kick it off, go home when I come in in the morning and it's all indexed up, never happens. Something's gonna crash, something's gonna go wrong. You wanna come in, check your work, make sure it's good, then move on to next step. In a text extraction, we certainly want to enable text extraction so that we could uh, search our documents. Uh, one option here that I think is interesting, include metadata and extracted text. So when our client sends an email says, can you please search for these keywords in anything? Well, you know, there's really not a good way of doing it because when you search for certain keywords, it'll search for them in extracted text and it will not search for them in like file name, file path uh, or any metadata fields. So there's really no way to search truly across everything. Uh, and this is one of the options that LexisNexis added to kind of solve that problem. So you will take all your metadata, 
put it into your extracted text, and then DT search will index everything in now your metadata in text is indexed. But then what happens when you go to produce, you are producing all that metadata with extracted text, uh, which I think is really bad because you may not want to produce all the metadata. There's certain fields that are required for production. And if you have them in an extracted text, you know, they kind of go in or you have to image and OCR everything. And then the other side is going to say, why are you giving us this crappy OCR text? Give us extracted text that that's nice for searching. Um, so that's um, kind of a major downside here. Um, binary scanning and text extraction. This may be useful if you're dealing with deleted files. Let's say you had a forensic image and you recovered deleted items. Um, what you'll get in there is just a bunch of garbage text and junk. But if you do binary scan extraction, run your search terms, you get a hit. Now you can go to that deleted file or partial file, corrupt file, whatever you have, and start kind of digging manually. You probably want to have your forensics department get involved at that point, so they start digging around. Um, and then uh, we have a couple options, identifying hidden text and language content. Uh, language content, I think, is a great option. Too bad you can't do it after the fact, uh, but uh, it's, it's very nice to have. And there's a certain logic that goes into it. If you turn it on, you can restrict to common languages or not common languages. And there's specific um, logic how it's going to try to identify first language, second and third. Uh, it gets a little bit complicated and it does confuse some clients a little bit, but I found that this is a really good option. And uh, if you have time to perform this during loading, you should turn this on. And that's my overview of ED Loader in Low Pre-Discovery. If you like this video, please share it with your coworkers. Uh, subscribe to see more videos like that. Click the bell so you're notified when I upload new videos. And if you have any comments, please put them in the comment box below, along with any suggestions for future videos that you would like to see. Thank you for watching.